We're going to welcome Design Hill Baptist Church today. We hope the Lord will bless you for being here on this beautiful day. Boy, we started off a bad day yesterday, didn't we? Thunder, lightning, rain, and then all the wind came in, but it was a beautiful day. And I want to thank all the people who came out for the work day. We had a great work day yesterday. We had a lot of stuff planned for outside working, but we didn't do any. But we got everything ready yesterday. All the people here, we got everything ready for the uh, youth yard sale for their camp in uh, July. And so we've got everything set out in the gym there and everything taken care of. And so we appreciate all the hard work. Now, here's a good thing about yesterday. And, uh, you know, you always just trust the Lord, let the Lord do whatever needs to be done. And I believe God can handle things a whole lot better than we can handle things. I really do. I think God can. And uh, we should all know that for a fact. But whenever it comes down to uh, yard sales, and it, now let me say this, church does not operate off of yard sales. That's tithe and offerings, okay? But at the same time, we do have special things for young people, let them work and make their money and do things of that sort. And so that's what this is for, for the youth. And uh, how God blesses that sometimes, we had a couple that's not affiliated with our church whatsoever. They called Janice and I the other day and said, hey, we'd like to go out and eat with y'all and buy y'all a meal. And anytime somebody wants to buy me a meal, yeah, where you want to go, man? I, I love a good free meal. I mean, they taste real good when they're free. And I uh, said, we want, and then we'd like to come by your church and look at your yard because we might to put in our place. So we went out and eat with them yesterday, and, uh, and they, they paid for our meal. And I, I fumbled around. I couldn't find my wallet, you know, and they was able to pay for mine. And, and Larry taught me that. <laughs> I learned that one from him. So we, uh, whenever we got through, they went down and came in here to look at the church and everything. Here's what they did. They bought two small items down there yesterday, but gave $500 for the youth camp already. So we already got $500 for the youth camp. They wanted to give a special offering for that. So the Bible says, go and do ye likewise. <laughs> Fran was hoping for 3000 We can get 10000 so, but anyhow, we appreciate all the work, and I just want to let you know that little tidbit there, that what a, what a blessing that is. All right, we have a youth meeting coming up, and that's going to be down at Macedonia World Baptist Mission in Houston, Georgia, mission office down there. And it's a, it's a youth missions youth conference, what it is for young people, 15 to 25. And uh, it, they'll have a T-shirt. They have a lot of stuff. I've been talking to some young people in the church, and that will be on May the 22nd on a Saturday. And I need to know by tonight, and we're talking the tabernacle, some of the young people over there, and I, I need to know by tonight sizes and who it can go, what size you wear, because the $25 uh, fee that they charge for uh, the meeting is uh, you'll, you'll get a meal, you get their booklets and everything, and there'll be some missionaries from around the world there challenging you and our young people into missions, and that'll be a day on Saturday. We'll have to leave here about 7.30 on Saturday morning would get back sometime in the evening. It's just a one-day thing, and uh, they, they host this every year. And so if you can go, you let me know. We need to know tonight. If you've got any young people, uh, Debbie and them got some family, I need to know by tonight because Nathan Saunders has been driving me crazy. He, how many people you got coming? What sizes? I said, I don't know yet. I'm working with two or three different churches here. I, I don't know. So I'm going to shoot him, and then we'll go. We'll be okay, okay? And uh, that's what we're going to do. Here's a Here's a... I want to make this announcement today. It's kind of a, uh, what would you call it, a, one of those emotional things that you, uh, you're excited for the people, but, you, but you're not excited for the people. May the 23rd, we're going to, on a Sunday morning, and I'll be preaching a revival over at Brandon Baptist and on, starting on May the 23rd and going through that Wednesday night. But on May the 23rd, uh, I hope I can get through this. Uh, May 23rd, and uh, we're going to have a get-together for the last service uh, for Michael and Dorothy. And probably should let Jason do this. He doesn't get emotional. He's dry. <laughs> and... Uh, but Michael and Dorothy, Dorothy works with the VA, and she does house calls for veterans. She's a nurse practitioner, and uh, she's getting a transfer over to Hawaii. Now, who wouldn't want to go there? 
it gives us a place to go to, Hawaii. You know, when we got to, we got a place to stay. So that Sunday morning, I'll preach over at Brandon Baptist. I'll get back over here. They start early over there. I'll get back over here that Sunday morning. And then uh, we're going to have hot dogs and hamburgers. And we, want, we just want you to know that uh, Michael and Dorothy has been such an asset to our church. Amen. And we're going to miss them. We just want to do something special that day. Amen. I have to second what the preacher said about Michael and Dorothy. So back in 2014, 2013, somewhere around in there, 2014 and 15, I think it was, I worked with Michael for a little bit, doing some landscaping, saving a little extra money. And it's interesting to work with Michael Faulkner because you get to work and he's playing games on his phone for about 10, min 10 to 15 minutes. I'm like, Michael, we need to get to work. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. But I appreciate Michael. You know, I have to say one thing about Michael, too. When I was working at Tri-County College, my car broke down. And from here, that's about a 45-minute to an hour drive. And I couldn't get it started. It was, it was just dead. So I called Michael, and he drove his truck and pulled his trailer all the way out there and towed my car back here to Greenville. And he didn't charge me not one thing. And it takes a special person to do that for someone. And so I appreciate Michael doing that. And, and um, there's a lot of good memories talking with him and with Dorothy. And they're um, going to be leaving us for Hawaii. Are you guys sure you want to go? There's a lot of humidity down there. Are you sure you want to, you sure you want to do that? But uh, we're looking forward to having that, that time um, of fellowship with them for that evening. And so you guys be in prayer for them because that's a significant move. And talk about, now granted, I understand you're on an exotic island, but um, that's a significant distance from family and from friends. And it's essentially a different world in a way. And so that's going to be a, a big change for them. So you guys keep them in prayer as that's going to be coming up for them. As the preacher said about the service opportunity day yesterday, uh, we do appreciate everyone who was able to come out and to contribute their time and their efforts and their energy to that. Um, there was a lot of clothes to go through. I don't like going through clothes and tagging stuff. So ladies, all of you ladies who did that, thank you for doing it because I didn't have to. And... Uh, we got some things moved down there. There's quite a bit in there. When I walked in there, I thought I was walking into a Goodwill store because um, there's quite a bit down there. And I actually came away with an item that I didn't expect. I, uh, Miss Fran had put a espresso machine and uh, for $2. And I'm like, man. And I, at first I was kind of leery. I was like, I don't know who's had this. I don't, I don't know where this has come from. You know? And then Miss Fran's like, oh, I used to have it. That was mine. I was like, give it to me. <laughs> So I took that, and it's in my car. I, have to, I actually have to learn how to make some espressos now. So if anyone wants to school me on that, I'll be more than happy to, uh, to accept that. Um, but, yes, thank you to everyone who was able to come out and help with that. We certainly do appreciate it. Uh, the yard sale will be on April 14th and 15th, and that will be, uh, as the preacher mentioned, to help with the teen extreme trip for coming up this summer um, in July. And so the teens are getting excited about that. I'm actually getting a little excited about it, so if you've never been able to go be a part of it, it's certainly an exciting thing to be a part of. Uh, the Hope of Israel Conference will be May 21st to the 24th. There is a sign-up sheet in the back if you are able to contribute your time or efforts or energy to that. Uh, we would certainly uh, welcome that. So if you have any interest in being a part of that, then there is that sign-up sheet at the, the, the back vestibule. Um, also, too, on April 23rd, uh, which will be the fourth Sunday of this month, for the evening service, we will be moving our service over to Brandon Baptist. Um, the preacher will be speaking over there that evening. Now, if you are a part of the choir, the choir will be singing that evening um, at Brandon Baptist. And so please don't show up here um, for that day. Again, that's April 23rd. We will be over at Brandon Baptist and we'll um, conclude our service over there for that day. If you do have your Bibles with you, please take them and turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1, 2, and 3. And Brother Curtis will come and read at this time.
Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Let's all stand for a word of prayer. And Brother Will, will you lead us in this prayer? Amen. Just one other thing before Joe comes lead us in a song. Uh, today we're going to start a new thing here at the church. Okay, we got the uh, offering boxes over here, two over here, two at the back. We got plates here and plates there. During the time of fellowship, when the choir comes down, we won't be passing the plates today. You got box here, box here, box there. There's envelopes there. There's envelopes down here. Envelopes at the table. So just put them in the uh, plate there if you would. And then next Sunday is Easter. We got some uh, got some cards that you can hand out. Invite some friends to come. Next Sunday is Easter. And we'll just have a 10.30 in the morning service next Sunday. Okay, no evening service on Sunday night. And I had to make that announcement after we were discussing in Sunday school about churches doing away with evening services and all that. So, it was a, But we've always done that on Easter Sunday and if you want a record of your giving you always want to put it in an envelope because sometimes you just write it on a check uh, they may miss it and Beth never sees the check sometimes they try to catch it when they're counting the money but if you want a good accurate account make sure you put it in an envelope and put it in those boxes all right Joe come up please all right we'll sing all four verses 328 more love to thee O Christ more love to the choir. You know, when you come up, um, we'll be together at 5 o'clock tonight before Easter. And then next week, of course, we will not have a practice. But uh, please be in place at 5 o'clock tonight for that, okay? All four verses. Together, we first. Bye. 
congregation, you may be seated. was broken, mine was mended. He became sin, now I am clean. The cross he carried bore my burden. The nails that held him set me free. His life for my
despised and rejected, stripped of his garments and oppressed. I am loved and accepted, and I wear a robe of righteousness. His life for mine, his life for mine. How could it ever be that he would die? God's son would die. have a time of fellowship as the choir comes down again find the new boxes and utilize those that's what we'll be placing on offerings so no ushers going around after this okay have a time of fellowship As you return to your seats, all that are able, please remain standing. We're going to sing all three verses, 272. He is able to deliver thee, 272. We have a special ensemble, I'm going to call it. They have a name for themselves. I'll let Jason do all the talking on that uh, to sing after this. Uh, all three verses, 272, okay? All right, you sing the first. Tis the grandest theme through the ages run. Tis the grandest theme for a mortal tongue. Tis the grandest theme that the world has sung. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though by sin I him for rest. Our God is able to deliver thee. Tis the grandest theme in the earth or main. Tis the grandest theme for mortal strain. Tis the grandest theme to the world again. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able the grandest thing let the tidings roll to the guilty heart to the 
the sinful soul. Look to God in faith, He will make thee whole. Our God is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. He is able to deliver thee. Though by sin oppressed, go to Him for rest. Our God is able. Thank you very much. A great singing. You may be seated. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone, again. I know I talk quite frequently up here, but I did want to uh, say a few things before we sing this morning. First of all, I feel like Bob Barker on The Price is Right with his chord. <laughs> here we go. Um, so, first of all, for... I had been making announcements about if you have a group that's three or more, um, if you could come up with a name for it. You know, it just helps people to remember. And so we have the five of us here, so we have come up with the name Spoken For, because our hearts are spoken for by Christ. So that's the name of our group. So if in the future, if you would like to hear us sing a specific song, just say, I would like to hear Spoken For. And so we'll know that you would like to hear us. Um, but the song that we're singing this morning, um, it's kind of interesting how it came about. Um, it's actually something that Brother Sam and I collaborated on together. And it was a Wednesday night back in September, and I was up there in the balcony, and he was playing something on the piano. And I was like, what are those dulcet tones? And so I ran, I literally ran down here, and I was like, Sam, what are you playing on the piano? And he's like, whatever's in my head. And I said, well, I need for you to record that because that's too good to not have words. And so he did. He recorded about a 30-second clip. And over the next few weeks and a month or so, and I was just walking one day, and the Lord just gave me the words to it. And initially it started out as just one verse, and it had a little chorus. And we're like, what are we going to do with this song? We don't know what to do with it. And we considered for a while maybe to have it as a choir number, and that just never really came to fruition. And so we developed it a little bit further, and we have three verses, and we have a chorus, and we have a bridge. And so I was like, I think that would be a good song. We all agree to be a good song for our group to sing. So the title of the song is Ever Near. And because for those of us who are believers, we know that Christ is ever near to us, and he's never... He's within us. His Holy Spirit is living within us. And we're never alone. And this song has nothing to do with me or with Sam or with any of us up here. It was complete inspiration from the Holy Spirit, I believe. So anything good that comes from this has nothing to do with us and everything to do with Him. So we hope this morning that this song will be a blessing to you in some way. Thank you. 
Catch a hold of what Jason said the name of their group was, but whatever the name of that group was, that's a wonderful group and it's a wonderful song. And uh, I did catch some of the things that said, and I'm just going to ask Brother Sam, did you uh, make all that music together? And they just recorded it and everything. So I appreciate the talent that God's given us here at Zion Hill Baptist Church. And uh, Brother Sam, he uh, took over his piano when our son Nathan moved down to Charleston. And uh, Nate, uh, Sam took over, and he just jumped right in and picking up with the choir and uh, doing a lot of stuff that we uh, never thought would be possible. I had one person in the church whenever Nathan moved away, and Nathan had been our piano for years, and uh, they said, boy, the church is going to miss Nathan. Well, you know, God always has somebody to step right in. I know we got Sister Michelle, and, and then we got Sam, and I don't think our music has skipped a beat, and I believe it's all for the glory of God. I really do. Now, someone brought it to my attention that a while ago when I was talking about Michael and Dorothy that I mentioned May the 23rd. Did I say that? Only one person. Did I, okay, how many people? April 23rd. See, May 23rd, Janice, that's our anniversary. So I'm, I got May the 23rd on my mind, and also the Hope of Israel conference is during that week. And so it's April the 23rd, just about a couple of weeks away here, that we'll be doing that for Michael and Dorothy after the uh, AM service down in the gym. So we hope you can come. And uh, I asked them what they wanted. If they wanted uh, ribeye steaks or prime sirloin or prime rib or whatever, Michael said, we just take hamburgers. <laughs> so it's Michael's fault. <laughs> So, we, I mean, we could have had prime rib, and Michael said, we'll just take a hamburger. I, I, I'm a hamburger guy. I could eat hamburgers every day. Matthew chapter number 21. Today, I told Joe I was going to pre preach on Psalm Sunday. <laughs> it's Palm Sunday. I have, I have been preaching now for 40 years, okay, full-time and uh, preaching and working in Brazil and uh, different places in the world. And I've been here at church 25 years. And uh, I, I'll be honest, this is the first time in my ministry that I'm going to preach on Palm Sunday. And uh, I'm just going to give you a couple of quick thoughts because I caught one verse and one part of a verse in here that I thought, man, it, it, you know, whatever happened on Palm Sunday, you know, this right here has got to be, this should catch our attention. And I hope you, I, if you'll just give me a few minutes, I'm not going to be real long, and, and, but I want to give you a couple of thoughts here in, Psalm, um, in, in Matthew chapter number 21. And uh, when I was thinking about this message in Palm Sunday, you know, this was a parade in Jesus coming in to Jerusalem for the last time. And, 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 uh, and, and of course, the people were spreading palm leaves out and palm things, and uh, they call it Palm Sunday. And it's like a parade whenever he was coming in. And uh, I, whenever I was thinking about a parade, I thought about, and my, we didn't get to go to a lot of places. Our family didn't have a lot of money. And we didn't get to go to a lot of places, but every year we made it a point we'd go to the Greenville Downtown Christmas Parade. And I'm talking about when it was at night, and it seemed like it was freezing cold every time. And we would always sit where, where, where uh, coming down South Main and, and Augusta Street turns off to the left there. And we would stand there, and the parade just ended just right up the road there a little bit before you got to Vardry Street and all. And so we would stand there, and the reason we stood there, because you had the Krispy Kreme donut right here behind you. And, it, it, you know, to watch a Christmas parade and eat hot Krispy Kreme donuts just off the fire 
and then have some hot chocolate, there was nothing like it. And I always enjoyed that parade. And how many people can remember parades you went to, Christmas parades? Go ahead, don't be ashamed to raise your hand. Don't be able to do that. And parades, I love parades, and I, I've probably been to several different parades. Another one that really caught my attention, if you want to call this a parade, when we were living in Brazil, South America, 1984, we were still in language school in Sao Paulo. And they had just elected their first president after the military had taken over in 1963. And then the military stepped aside and let them elect their own president in 1984. A man by the name of Tancredo Neves, he was the president, voted in. They thought he was going to be the savior. They almost put him up as a god. He himself even went to the uh, pope and to the Vatican. And he told the pope personally, he said this right here, I'm going to make Brazil. 100% Catholic again. In other words, he's going to get rid of the evangelical churches, the gospel preaching churches. He's going to get rid of all that. And there's a lot of missionaries in Brazil at the time. And so he was going to get rid of all that. Well, and, and, and he even made the statement. He made the statement. He said, not even God can stop me now. Now, the night before, listen, be not deceived. God is not mocked. You got to remember that. You don't, you don't, you don't challenge God. You don't challenge him. I'm, I'm in Brazil. I didn't understand the Portuguese language or not. We had a little small, I'm talking about a little small black and white TV that the language school recommended we get so we could watch the news and learn the proper way of speaking Portuguese and all. And so we were there and the, 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 that one night and, and, uh, and when he, he went in the hospital the night before his inauguration with a stomach virus. Let me just say this, he never made it out of the hospital. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Not even God can stop me now. God can stop anything. Anytime he wants to, he can do whatever. God is God, and besides him, there is none else. And, and, and a few weeks later, after he stayed in the hospital, he finally passed away. They had a big parade from, from the Heart Institute downtown Sao Paulo, where we'd studied in language school down there. And we lived right next to the, what was the international airport at that time, Congonias, and, or, or in Combica, no, Congonias. And we lived there, and so I told my wife, I said, they're going to have this big parade. They're going to put his body on top of a fire truck, and they're going to parade him from down at the hospital, heart, uh, the hospital institute, and they're going to bring him all the way down the, the, the main road here, and they're going to bring him to the, to, the, to the airport and fly him out to another state to bury him. And I said, we got to go see this. this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. So they had a big parade. It was going to be like a 30-minute drive from where he was down to the airport. It took half the day because you had millions and millions and millions of people on the side of the road. And, boy, I mean, it just had a hard time for them to come. Where we were standing, they had the military, and they had cannons. And whenever they brought his body by on that, on that uh, fire truck, when they brought his body by, they were shooting the cannons. Now, it was just blank shots, but people were passing out. I mean, they, it, was, it was the most... Craziest, probably the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. People passing out because they thought he was their God and all this. And, and that was a parade that was sticking in my mind. And there's some, been some great parade. Veteran Day parade, Fourth of July parade. There have been a lot of parades. But I don't think there have ever been a parade like this in here where Jesus coming in to Jerusalem for his last time. So look what it says here in chapter number 21. Let's just read a few verses here. In verse number 1, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethpage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied with a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. Let me say that word there, A-S-S, is a biblical word. Okay, and, and I, I, I stand with the King James on this, and uh, it is a biblical word. Now, when I'm preaching, I'm going to use donkey a lot because just, just because of what that word has turned into today. And so I'm not trying to change the King James Bible, but I, I will read it just like it is. But just for the sake of younger people, I won't use that word a lot because that word has turned into a bad word today, okay? And, and it said this right here, And if any man say unto thee, uh, unto you, you shall say, or let me try that again. If any man say aught unto you, you shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send thee. And this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye, the daughter of Zion, behold, the king cometh unto the meek, unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and he brought the ass and the colt and put them bef uh, uh, on their clothes, and they set uh, him their own. And a very great multitude there spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that uh, went before 
and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, the son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved. I hope you'll underline that. All the city was moved, saying, who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Now, we talk about Palm Sunday. We talk about parade day and them coming in. And no doubt, whenever Jesus is coming in, I think as he's coming into Jerusalem, and we can say a lot of things about what it meant, what Palm Sunday meant, and them spreading out and shouting hallelujah. Hey, I believe there's nothing wrong with saying hallelujah in the church, right? And glorifying God. Nothing at all wrong with that. And we should be excited about what God can do. But I, you've got now a chance to you've got now a chance to accept me as Lord, as Savior, as King, as as, as a city, as Jerusalem. And he was just kind of saying this right here: "Choose me, if you would." Now, there's a lot of people today. We can present Jesus in a lot of different ways. We can present him who he is. We can present him high and exalted on his throne. We can say a lot of things about the Lord, and still people reject him. If the Lord Jesus Christ himself seriously were to come to earth today, and he's not going to do that right now, I'm talking about to come and preach in our pulpits. Next time he comes, he's going to be in the clouds. He's going to call the church out, and we understand that. But if he were to come and preach in our pulpits today, I promise you, a lot of people still would not accept him. Whenever he sets up his kingdom on earth for a thousand years and rules for a thousand years, after that thousand years, the devil's going to be loose for a, a short period, and he's going to raise up an army against the, 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 the saints. And so I'm just telling you, this, this world does not care about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this day, this Palm Sunday, when he's coming in to the city there, it's the same thing happening. A lot of people, oh, they might have been shouting, and they might have been rejoicing, but they did not receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior there on that day. He knew that although there was a great reception on Palm Sunday, that he would still be rejected and die on the cross for our sins. A lot of people, hey, here he is, Hosanna. Here, here's what I want to look at today. Let's look at the plan that Jesus gave. Now, this is a simple plan. And when I thought about this, I want you to look, in, if you would, in verse number 1. In verse number 3, here's a simple plan that God, that Jesus Christ gave some disciples that day. And when he drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come into Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, okay, here's the plan that he gave them, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied, and a coat with her, loose them, bring them unto me. And if any man say all unto thee, you shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. In other words, that was a very simple command, wasn't it? Wasn't very hard to understand. I mean, they were talking in the Sunday school today about the early and the latter rains. And boy, there may be some complicated things in there. Pastor, you got a comment on that? Oh, yeah. What does the early and latter rain mean? I said, one comes before the other. One's early and one's later. <laughs> one's later. You know, that's very simple. That's like whenever David killed Goliath with that rock and Man, he put that rock right between his eyes there, and Goliath fell down. David went up there and cut his head off. And he was dead as a doornail before he even cut his head off. And so people question today, why did David cut Goliath's head off since he was already dead? I said, it's very simple. He wanted his rock back. <laughs> he wanted to put that in a trophy case. I mean, that was a special rock. He wanted to get his rock back. And he didn't want any of the Philistines to have it. So here's a very simple plan. We see Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, putting into action a plan for this big parade. Now, the people of Jerusalem, I just said, have an opportunity to receive him as Lord and Savior. But here they are. They reject him again that day, and he's going to go die on the cross of Calvary. And, and, and here's the thing. Boy, you could, you, could, you could really get a crowd together, and the people want to do something, and they want to... Listen, leadership, things rise and fall on leadership. And I said, oh, let's say this. Those people were spreading the palm leaves out. They were saying, Hosanna, here comes the king, here comes the Lord, here comes our Savior, here comes our Redeemer. And yet the leadership of the town didn't like it. And a lot of times, listen, we've got a government today that does not like church. In the majority, we got a government today that does not like God. We got a media that does not like God. We got uh, TV shows that do not like God. But look what it says, if you would, uh, if I can find in verse number 12. Look what it says in verse number 12. When all these people were doing this, and Jesus went into the temple of God, listen what he did. He made them mad, didn't he? All those religious rulers of that day, and cast all out all them that sold him. 
uh, bought in the temple and overthrew the tables and the money changers and the seats that, were sold, that sold doves. And said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Now here's what, here, here, here's what happens whenever God begins to move, and it can happen even in churches if we're not careful. Here's what happened. Verse number 15, And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. They didn't like it. And whenever people start giving glory to God today, even in churches sometimes, you have leadership in church that they don't like it. They don't like it. They don't like it. Hey, I love to see children serving the Lord. I do. I love to see these little children walk around here. And, and, and we, we love to get again, back again. We'd love to get that little junior choir up here, the little munchkins choir, let them sing and everything. Nothing wrong with that. But a lot of times whenever God begins to move and whenever things begin to happen, some of the leaders and some of the elders and some of the people that are in leadership, you know what? Oh, no, that, that's just spending too much time on that. And that's... That, 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 that shouldn't be, and we shouldn't do that. And listen, you know, that displeased them, sore displeased them, and then they turned the crowd on Jesus, and they crucified our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But there was a plan. There was a plan, and they didn't like it. Whenever Jesus came in and started healing people in the temple and running out the hypocrites, running out the thieves, and running out all those crazy people, and we probably could do some of that today in our churches around. Look at what it says in verse number 2, verse number 3. Jesus said that, and he said in verse number 3, If any man say all unto that you... Very simple plan that he gave them, okay? You go get those donkeys and you bring them in here. And then he said in verse number 3, If any man say all unto you, you shall say... I hope you underline this statement. I believe this is the greatest statement of these, these verses. The Lord hath need of them. Well, what a statement that is. Now listen, I want to say this. God, throughout the Bible, has used animals many times in his ministry. God has used animals to speak. I mean, we had a guy named Balaam, right? And, and, and his, if you'll let me use this word, his, Balaam's ass, Balaam's donkey. He saw the angel with a sword and Balaam didn't see it. He started talking to Balaam. Did he not? God, did God not use a, a donkey then? God can use animals to promote his kingdom and to get his word out there. And then I, I think of an animal also, a little chicken, a little rooster called, that whenever Peter denied the Lord three times, God had that rooster to crow on him. And somebody said, well, that's why preachers, Baptist preachers love chicken so much because we're trying to get back at all those roosters that, that told on one of our friends, and we're trying to get back at them. And that's why we, you know, a, a preacher's belly usually is a chicken graveyard. There's only one preacher I knew around here in our area that didn't eat chicken, and that was Dr. Harold B. Seitler over here at Tabernacle. He never ate chicken. He loved fish, and when he drove the roads going to his meetings and everything, he had a big thing of peanut butter. He loved peanut butter, and that's what he would eat. He would just dip out that peanut butter and do things like that, but he didn't like chicken. In other words, he wasn't trying to get even with the chickens that got with Peter, got told on Peter there that day. But I'm just saying God can use them. Now, if God, listen, and I, I like that. I like that phrase. The Lord hath need of them. If God has need of animals, how much more can God use humans to do His work? How much more if we realize who God is and who it is that's calling us? And, and, and let me just say this right here: being a pastor of a church, this is not a job. This is not a profession. This is a calling. And God, hey, listen, it's not just a pastor, but I'm talking about every member of Zion Hill Baptist Church and all the churches around. You know what? God hath need of them. Now, if God wanted to, he could call the angels to come down here and preach to us. He could send all the, he could use all the animals. And I really do believe that the animals do exactly what God formed them to do. I mean, you have dogs barking at the moon, right? <laughs> I mean, they bark. They make their noise. You have the chickens crowing every morning, the roosters crowing every morning and waking us up and doing all kind of things. And I believe the animal world and Janice, she, she still believes till today. She, I mean, listen, we, we are spending so much money feeding her birds around our house. God got them worms down there. Why do I have to go to the store and buy feed for the birds? I wish y'all could explain that to me and my wife and tell her, I mean, we, I mean, and she says this, she said, do you hear them? She said, I just put their feet out and listen to them singing to me. 
Well, that's her way of saying, God is using those birds to make my heart happy. And I've got cardinals, and I've got bluebirds, and I've got, I've got sparrows. And hey, I, I, I like the woodpecker. I like the woodpecker. Woodpecker, one time, he gets that suet ball. He'll, and then you'll hear him in our backyard, and those big trees in our backyard. I think, there goes Woody. Oh, Woody's going today, and Woody Woodpecker. He's out there just a going. But God takes those animals, and he uses those animals, and they speak to us, do they not? And if God can take a bird, if God can take a, a, a donkey, if God can take animal world, and he has need of them, what about us today? Does God not need us today? So whenever we come down to it, the Lord hath need of them. I'm talking about the God of the universe, the very Son of God, you know, we, we, we sometimes don't realize who God is, who Jesus is. We just think he's another man, he's another figure we look to, he's another Santa Claus, or he's another... Debbie, Debbie Grant, she made a, one of those that women put in front of their houses now, they welcome fall, spring, and summer, and winter, and all that, you have to change, you, you know, everything to spend money. You got to have it to change the seasons around. Everybody in our neighborhood, we walk in our neighborhood some. Y'all the Moors? Yeah, how do you know we're the Moors? You got it on your front door? Big sign, the Moors. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's who we are. We're the Moors. Everybody knows who the Moors are in our neighborhood. And Debbie Grant made a good sign, I reckon a couple of years ago, and it had on there, Silly Rabbit. Easter is for Christ. It's not for a rabbit. <laughs> you know? Christmas is not for the fat man with a red suit. It's not. But I'm just telling you, whenever I say this, and, and I understand the part of that, the commercial part of it, I understand all that. But what I'm saying is, if we really realize who the Lord Jesus Christ is, if we really realize that he is God in the body of flesh, when he came in to Jerusalem this day on Palm Sunday, and they're shouting Hosanna, you know what? Some of them really realized who he was. Some of his disciples and his others, they realized who he was, and they were shouting the praises. Now, when he was crucified on that day, we'll mention it next Sunday, on uh, Easter Sunday when he was crucified, boy, the crowd was saying, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Today, they're shouting his praises. Tomorrow, next week, they'll be crucifying him on the cross. And Pilate said, hey, I find no fault in him. But I'm saying this is the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who died for our sins, the one who, listen, who rose again, and he saved us. And, and, and if nothing else, he's only given us eternal life. That's all. I mean, that's all he's given us, eternal life. And should that not make us excited? Should we not be happy because, hey, I don't have to worry about hell. It's not because of who I am. It's because of what he did. He died in my place. He died in my stead there that day. How much more can he use us today? Listen, the, he died for us. He gave us eternal life. And then he finds useful ways in his plan. He, see, God's got a plan for my life, your life, and he's got a plan for this church. And we've got to follow that plan. And I believe that God can take either one of us who are, I believe, whenever he created Adam and Eve, God stood back and said, wow, look at what I just created. Look at my creation. That's what God did. Now, that's the God that we serve. This is the God that comes in on Palm Sunday. And the people are laying out and the people are hollering and shouting and praising the Lord there that day. And I believe God in his infinite plan can find something for people at Zion Hill Baptist Church to do. I mean, every one of us. Look in Matthew chapter number 28. You're there in chapter number 21 right now. Look in Matthew chapter number 28. I bet you've never heard these verses before. In Matthew chapter number 28. I'll say this. We've heard them time and time and time again, but we just let them slip by. If God can use a donkey and the coat of a donkey... If God can use them to bring his son into that day and to exalt him, for people to exalt him, how much can he use us to exalt his name through our life today? God, he said, the Lord hath need of them. Can I say the Lord hath need of us? He really does. Because Matthew chapter 28, verse number 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of this world. Listen, you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ, he has saved us, and he can use us. He can put his hand upon us, and he had need of us, the church, to put the gospel out to lost and dying world. God has need of us, and I hope we'll understand that today. Who will you see tomorrow? 
Who will you see this afternoon? Who will God put in front of you? Uh, 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 Janice's brother, years ago, years ago, Janice's brother, he would ride to church with us. And he wasn't saved. And, and he's come here before. And her youngest brother, the baby of the family, Eddie, and uh, we, we, Janice and I, talking to Eddie, we led him to the Lord in the back seat of our car. Isn't that something? In the back seat of our car going to church, we led him to the Lord. God wants to use us to lead people to him. But we hardly ever do that. We'll talk about everything else, but we won't talk about that. Look in John chapter number 13. God wants us to uh, spread the gospel. And then God gave us the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter number 13. He gave us a new commandment, John chapter number 13. You know what God wants us to do? He wants us to demonstrate love. We as Christians, we should demonstrate love. Now, we went to the bank a couple of weeks ago, and we borrowed some money to put this new heat and air, air unit in. And when I went to the bank, the bank that we deal with every day and every week, and uh, she, wanted a, she wanted a copy of our Constitution. And I really balked at that. I said, I really don't want you to have a copy of our Constitution. I said, I really don't. And she said, why? I said, well, we got some things in there that's in our Constitution and our bylaws of our church. I said, some people, they read them and don't understand. They'll think we're bigots. They'll think that we hate people. They think, and I said, just because we got some policy that protects our church and it stands on the firm foundation of the Word of God, it does not mean we hate people. It's, it, listen, when God hates sin, and God, people die because of sin, and things happen because of sin, and God told Adam and Eve, he said, he said, when you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. What that is doing is showing the comparison of my sin to his righteousness. God is all righteous. And God, to be a righteous God, he's going to have to deal with sin. And I told her at the bank, I said, I really don't want you to see it. And I said, you'll think that we hate this crowd, we hate that crowd. We don't hate them, we love them. They think we hate them. They think that we have hate crimes. And we don't do that. We, love, we want to see them all get saved. And, I, and I'll say this right here in the church. Boy, you have churches today that people hate one another. And here's what the Bible says here. I believe Jesus Christ wants to use us in John chapter 13. And look what it says in verse number 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, and you do also, and you also, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. So I believe God wants us to demonstrate love. God has need of a church. He has need of a people that will demonstrate love in this world. And if that, that love, number one, is going to start in our home, and it's going to uh, filter over into our church, and then it'll filter over to our workplace and our neighborhood and all that, God has a need for us to demonstrate love. We should demonstrate it. And churches hate one another, and people hate one another. Look in Titus. Real quick, Titus, I'm trying to hurry so we can get out of here. Titus, I don't even know where the book of Titus is right now. I don't know if I'm in the Old Testament or New Testament. But in the book of Titus, chapter number 3, if you'll turn there, Quickly as you possibly can, because I'm trying to get out of here. In, in Titus chapter number 3, here's another thing that God has need of us. You as a member, me as a member, God has need of us. Now these good works that he talks about here is not getting us heaven. The work that gets us to heaven is the work that Jesus Christ fulfilled on the cross of Calvary when he said it is finished. He died for our sins. In Titus chapter 3 and verse number 8 this is a faithful saying and these things I will or these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. You see God needs a church that's going to do good works. Now that's not getting us heaven. That is just to show our, our love for him and whatever he asks us to do. Lord, do you have need of this? And let me tell you one of the prayers I pray every day for Zion Hill Baptist Church and the membership of Zion Hill Baptist Church. I pray this every day. Lord, help us to be that faithful church that's obedient. We don't have to be known by everybody. We don't have to have all the emotions that all these other churches have. We don't have to have the excitement now we are excited don't misunderstand that we don't have to be like these other churches that come and go Lord but help us to be that church that's faithful that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can depend on when he wants somebody to step up to the bat and do something let us be that church so he said here that we would maintain good works these things are good and profitable unto me and now look first Peter chapter 2 and I'm finished First Peter, just a few more pages over. First Peter, chapter number 2. What are you saying, preacher? The Lord hath need of us. The Lord hath need of thee. You say, well, the Lord can't use me. Yes, he can. Well, I've not, 
God can still use you. There are certain things that certain people cannot do, but everybody has something to do in a church. There, God can use each one of us to do something. 1 Peter chapter 2, and the Bible says in verse number 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see, there's not a person in the church that cannot. Uh, we've all been made priests and kings, and we can offer praise to him. You see that? God needs a church. He, he needs us to offer praise to him. And also, uh, 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 that we would, sh we're a royal priesthood, and we would live our birthright. We are a special people. You're going to say, preach you, you're trying to say that we're better than anybody else? No, I'm not trying to say that. What I'm trying to say is, when Jesus saved, her, saved us, he has made us kings and priests. We're special. I mean, that's what the Bible said. We're peculiar people. Boy, they look at us and say, what they do that for? We're praising him. We're praising him. We're bringing glory to his name. Why do you do that then? Now, and here's my final statement. Sam, you come on to the piano if you would, please. Do we believe who Jesus is? Palm Sunday, boy, next Sunday, we're going to talk about Easter. We'll probably have a big crowd here next Sunday. And we'll talk about the crucifixion. I think we're going to sing some songs about it. We'll have some special music and everything. And we'll have a lot of people here. And it's going to be time for us to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ. If we believe who Jesus is, and he really has need, every young person in his church, God has need for you. That's why we try to encourage you to serve, to sing, to be faithful. We try to encourage our young people to do that. But I want to say this, and it's, it's, you say, preacher, you're crazy. Listen to me. Be ready to be used. If we believe who God is, be ready. Be ready to be used. Like these here. I mean, these two disciples and these animals God used to bring glory to his name and he come into Jerusalem. And I say, if we know that Jesus Christ said, I have need of thee, I have loved thee, I have saved thee, I have given thee eternal life, and we believe all that, and we know that God has need of us, let's be ready next week to be used of him. Let's be ready this week to be used of God. God, whatever you want me to do, help me, Lord, this week to show forth the praises of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to throw down the palm leaves and say, Hosanna in the highest, our Lord and Savior. Let's stand together, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Are you ready and are you willing to be used of thee? I have need of thee. Would you do that today? Would you say, Lord, use me this week? Altars are open if you need to come down. Lord, would you use me this week to be what you'd have me to be? Would you use me this week that I might be able to sing forth the praises of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? You see here, this church is not about me. It's not about you. It's all about him. And I hope that we'll see that here at Zion Hill Baptist Church. Would you do that? Would you come and say, Lord, help me? Young person, mom and dad, children, all can be used for the glory of God. Just tell them the Lord hath need of them on this Palm Sunday. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. He's calling for all of us to do his will. Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for this day. We thank you for the visitors we've had today. We thank you for uh, the faithful members of Zion Hill Baptist Church. And I pray, Lord, you might help us to realize today Lord, I know you can use the angels, you can use the animals, you can use anything in your kingdom. But we're so thankful that you have chosen to use men to propagate your gospel. Help us, Lord, to sing forth your praises this week and tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask these things in Jesus' name, for Jesus' sake. Amen, amen. Thank you for being here today on this Palm Sunday. And we'll be back tonight. Joe said we'll have choir practice. And I appreciate the choir coming in because we're looking at some new songs and everything. So be here at 5 o'clock in your place so we can get ready for next Sunday and be a blessing. Our main thing is not about singing songs perfect. It's not about hitting every note just right. We just want to be a blessing to the people of our church as the choir sings. Lord bless you. We'll see you tonight at 5 and 6 o'clock. And uh, next Sunday, try to get some of these uh, handouts here and hand out people and let them know that, hey, we have Easter Sunday next week. Lord bless you. We'll see you then.